In this lesson, we're going to go over the subtool master. Now, this isn't to be confused with your actual subtool palette, in that this is a plugin that allows you to automate certain processes. So you can find it up here in the plugin section under subtool master. Okay, let's take a look at it. You have multi append, mirror, merge, fill, export, delete invisible, high res visible, low res visible, scale offset, do visible. <laughs> Shift up, show all, hide all, and invert visibility. Let's look at multi append first. This allows you to import multiple OBJs into your subtool palette. So if you have a character with a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of objects like different clothing, articles, swords, weapons, whatever, you can basically grab all of them and import them into your subtool. Next. Let's say that you have an item on your character that you would like to see duplicated to the other side. In this case, it's an earring. Could be a glove or a weapon or maybe a piece of your belt. Go to Plugin, Subtool Master, and press Mirror. Make sure that you actually have the subtool selected, otherwise you're going to duplicate the wrong one. So let's go ahead and close Subtool, click on the tooth, go back, press Mirror. Okay, so you can either keep it as a separate subtool or you can merge them together. In this case we're actually going to keep them as separate. Then just select the axis you would like to see it duplicated on. In this case it's X. Press OK and there you go. Duplicated to the other side and earring on both. Hmm, you know what? Looking at these two earrings I kinda want them as the same subtool. So go ahead and turn off the rest of them and go back to the plugin. This time we're gonna click Merge. You can preserve polygroups this way merge only which basically creates a new subtool or you can merge and create a new subtool as well as delete the original tools that were used to create the new one kind of like deleting the evidence for this example we'll go ahead and leave the originals and just create a new one and there you go you've got a new subtool where they're both merged together and then you have the originals. Now keep in mind you could have deleted these using the other option. The next process we can play with is fill. Now what this allows you to do is fill your entire object, in fact all of your subtools, with the same color, material, or color and material. Now if you notice, the little jewel in his head is actually colored um, kind of purplish. The rest of him is actually filled with white. So Let's say you want a clean slate across your entire mesh. You want to get rid of all your poly paint. Go back to the tool, click fill, and say color. There you go. The jewel is no more. Well, <laughs> the color is gone, but the geometry is still there. Moving on. Next, we have high res visible and low res visible. These basically just affect the subdivision levels on whichever tools with this little eye icon next to them which basically means that they're visible so you either get low res or high res it shows you the subdivision levels accordingly so uh, so if I press low res see it lowers the resolution on all of them down to their base resolution or their subdivision level one and if I go back subtool master and say high res it'll bring them back up to their highest subdivision level. Then we have scale offset. This is used to basically fix any of your size issues when exporting. So let's say you're trying to export each of these uh, subtools as a separate OBJ and when you bring them into Maya or 3D Max and all of a sudden these earrings are actually just the exact same size as his head or maybe his head is as small as the earrings and you're basically having size issues you know it looked perfect inside of ZBrush but when you exported it it kinda looked funky well click this and it'll make sure all of your sizes are correct so it kinda just resets them then we have something that's uh, got a pretty comical name it's called do visible now this actually has a lot of functionality with a really odd name but anyway, you've got uh, it gives you the ability to subdivide all of your tools by one subdivision level. You can reconstruct subdivision levels. 
then you've got correct duplicate subtool names. You also have the ability to create a new layer at the top subdivision level of all of your tools. You can also turn off all layers as well as turn on next layer. Okay. Next we have shift up. Now this acts a lot like the arrows over here. The only difference is that shift up will move based off of visibility. So these arrows will only move your subtool up one at a time. Shift up will actually move them above all of the ones that are currently invisible. Then you've got show hide all. Pretty self-explanatory. Turns on all of your layers. And finally we have invert visibility. That basically turns off whichever ones that we're currently on and turns on the ones that we're currently off. So if you go back and do it again, there you go. Now keep in mind you can still do practically everything inside of the Subtool Master. You can do all of these things manually. However, it does help automate a lot of the more tedious processes. It's definitely a very useful tool.